Okay, so this video is really going to build upon what we did in the in the previous video. Um, throughout the course of this this module, we're really just improving our trying to improve our regression model by adding more predictive variables to it to Im improve the level of which we're able to actually predict our outcome variable. Now, this time we're going to add an extra predictive variable um, to our model, which will be a nominal variable with with multiple categories. Now, in the previous example, we had a nominal variable but it only had two categories it was dichotomous you could either be in you could either be male or female because the variable was gender so this time we're going to add an extra nominal variable whereby there are multiple categories but they can't be placed in any kind of order so we also in the last example had an ordinal variable where which means you, you can the categories are discrete but you can place them in some sort of logical order so we had social economic class and we could place them the categories in order of how affluent the individual within those categories would be likely to be. Um, the example we'll use here is ethnicity. Now there are multiple categories you can be uh, in, in this in the Lipsy data you can be white British, Indian, Bangladeshi, but those categories can't be placed in any kind of order. Um, well, let me show you what the variable actually actually is and how it's coded in this data set. So if we go to the variable view at the bottom here and then to ethnic, we can go along to this values column here and click on the on the edge of the box there to open up our value labels. Now as you can see there's a numeric code attached to each of the available categories. So uh, zero is white British, one mixed heritage, two Indian and so on. But these um, codes are arbitrary, they don't mean anything Placing them in order doesn't mean anything to the actual variable. So being um, in category three is not less of something than being in category six. Um, so what we're going to need to do with these variables is actually uh, recode them in such a way that we can enter them into our regression model. And we're going to need to do something, uh, create something called dummy variables. Okay, so we won't actually show you how to create the dummy variables on SPSS. Um, there'll be a section within the foundation module which will help you with this. Um, basically it involves using the transform menu here. Um, like I said, we, we won't show you how to do it because it, it's not something that's that's crucial at, at this stage of your sort of understanding of, of regression analysis. Um, the variables, the dummy variables themselves are, are labelled E1 to E7 here and they're actually already included within the data set for you so you'll be able to actually do the analysis and learn the what we consider the more important part of actually being able to input these variables into your analysis into your model and to interpret the regression coefficients which which come out when you when you finish running the analysis um, you'll notice that there are seven dummy variables here and there are eight categories in uh, ethnic group uh, sorry in the variable for ethnicity so what what we've actually done is we're, we're comparing seven of the categories against a baseline or reference category. Um, in this case, we're using white British as the reference category because it's the most um, commonly used uh, response. Um, and we're going to, for each of the other ethnic groups, we'll compare their score to this reference group of white British. So E1 is looking at mixed heritage and the regression coefficient that we'll get will actually be comparing directly um, the predicted outcomes for white British people compared to mixed heritage people when the um, when the other variables in the regression model are taken into account and that's exactly how we'll interpret each of these of these seven dummy variables. So actually if you cast your mind back this is very similar to how we were interpreting the, the variable of gender. We're, we're breaking it down in such a way that we're doing um, direct comparisons between categories. So you must always choose um, the reference category which, which makes most sense to you, that makes most sense for your analysis. Okay, so now that we've discussed um, dummy variables and what we're actually going to put into the model, let's let's go ahead and do do that. Um, as as before, you go to analyze regression and linear. You'll be getting familiar with this by now, um, and we need to pull our predictive variables into the independence box. Um, I'll, the the variables are there's cause quite a lot of variables in this data set. It will take you a while to find them. But because we entered created the variables in a certain order, it might be worth right clicking on this window here and um sort by file order. That way we'll be able to go straight up to E1 to E7 and select them all using the shift key. 
move them into the independence box. So that's going to be part of our model. We'll also include social economic class and gender as we did before. Find gender. There we go. Um, and as before, our outcome variable is exactly the same. We're looking at the standardized key stage three exam scores. And KS3 standard there. Okay. Um, as before, we're not going to get into sort of testing the assumptions yet. We're just trying to build our model up slowly before we actually go into the business of making sure that it's a it is a solid model. We're we're just showing you the concepts here. I mean, usually, obviously, it would be good practice to check all the assumptions for each model that you generate, but we won't use these options in this case. We'll just go straight in and uh, run the analysis. All right. So here we have our output. Um, Again, you can see in the variables entered, removed, it just gives you a list of all the variables that you've included. And you can see it looks quite long now because we have these seven dummy variables included within the model. Um, we won't go through and show you how to interpret the ANOVA and the model summary again because we'll, we'll be repeating ourselves. You can always check the previous video if you wanted to go over that again. But as we can see, we've got um, 0 0.170 an R square of 0 0.170 here, which means that now actually 17% of the variance in age 14 score is explained by our model. So that's gone up from the 15.5%, I think it was in the previous model. So adding ethnicity to the model does seem to be improving how how good it how accurate it is capable of predicting our our outcome of explaining the variance within our outcome. And as before, we can see that the an over test is statistically significant. So the model we've constructed is is a better way of predicting um, the outcome than simply using the mean as a as a way of of, of guessing, if you like, at what each predicted uh, predicted score will be for each participant. Uh, the bit we're most interested in in talking about here is the the coefficients table. So, as we sort of mentioned before, actually these the the coefficients for these dummy variables are fairly easy to to interpret because we're what we're doing is we're comparing each one to um, white the white British category. So for example, let's start with Indian. For Indian students, they actually score 1.4 more points than white British students at age 14. And this is actually when, well taking into account all of the other variables in the model. So it's, it's a substantially you know, improved score when you compare Indian students to white British. Um, we go down to the to the coefficient where the score drops the most. You can see that Black Caribbean students, um, compared to White British students, actually score uh, 4.25 points less, which is um, a, quite a substantial substantial drop because this is also taking into account social class and gender. Remember, so even when social class and gender are accounted for, Black Caribbean students score 4.25 marks at age 14 less than White British students. So we'll go a little bit further into sort of now into sort of really drilling into what what predicts age 14 scores as an outcome. And we can see that uh, ethnicity, um, social class and gender are all important variables. Although actually we can see here that some are not, some of the actual dummy variables aren't statistically significant. So this, there's a small coefficient here which suggests that Bangladeshi students might actually be no different to um, white British students and so not not actually worth including that um, that variable, predictive variable within the model. And the same with any other ethnic group, they don't seem to be performing any differently to white British students. So again it might not add any predictive power to the model if you like. Okay so we'll continue now um, with with further videos in, into building this model up even further and, and maybe even starting to look at some of the interaction effects uh, between these variables.